Hello, welcome to the University of Toronto Television Studios. My name is Chris McCullough, and with me today in the studio is Professor Mel Rosenberg, a professor of microbiology as well as a noted authority on bad breath, or halitosis as it's called. Mel comes from Tel Aviv, but he also has appointments at other universities in Europe and in North America. Mel, welcome to, to Toronto. And uh, just for starters, I should point out to you that uh, Mel's interest in bad breath has extended to the production of a couple of very notable mouthwashes, which Mel will be talking about, as well as the production and editing of a book that is now gaining wide public acceptance on the topic of bad breath or halitosis. Mel, perhaps you could begin by indicating to me where your interest in bad breath originated. Did you have bad breath? Uh, yourself? Is that what started things off? Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't know at the time. Uh, perhaps I did. Um, our interest started as a research interest about 15 years ago when uh, we invented the mouth rinse. And the research, in the research, we found that little tiny oil droplets can capture and remove from the mouth bacteria, oral debris, dirt, food particles. And this led us on a quest uh, to develop this mouth rinse which contains two separate phases, an oil phase and a water phase, which you shake. And we're very fortunate in that a few years ago, an Israeli company uh, began marketing it in Israel. It's the best-selling mouthwash in Israel, and I hope it will reach foreign shores at some, uh, at some stage. Uh, so essentially, the mouthwash was the motivating factor that got us interested in the problem, perhaps because most people use mouth rinse to, to freshen breath, and indeed, uh, the one that we've invented, uh, does so for between nine and twenty hours so I understand that the mouthwash industry is a multi-billion dollar industry which suggests that there's quite a bit of interest in people or maybe concern what, what is the origin of that concern why are people worried about their bad breath well bad breath is a very human problem uh, dates back many thousands of years perhaps since caveman rolled over in the morning and hugged his wife I don't know but uh, certainly from the time of the Bible and uh, the problem with bad breath is, first of all, it's an odor coming from our bodies. We're very sensitive about odors that come from our bodies. Secondly, it's a foul odor. Very few people think bad breath is something uh, wonderful. Um, and thirdly, we have trouble smelling it ourselves. So we don't know, essentially, when we have bad breath, and we don't know when we don't. Do you have any ideas or approaches by which the average citizen, such as myself, could find out whether or not they personally have bad breath? From what you're saying, I gather that it's sometimes hard to figure out whether or not you have it. Oh, this is the most difficult problem, and it's what I call the bad breath paradox, uh, trying to figure out whether you have bad breath or not. But what happens, in essence, is that there are millions of people that have terrible bad breath, and most of us know somebody from work or from home that suffer from bad breath on a day-to-day -day basis, Nobody tells them, and they don't know themselves. And on the other hand, you have millions of people who have a problem that I call halitophobia, which is a perceived self-odor when actually very little or none exists. And these people think that they have bad breath when they do not. Um, so essentially, I would answer that question by saying that first off, if you think that you have bad breath, you may or may not. There's very little way of knowing yourself. So what you have to do is ask somebody. Now, I know this isn't a simple thing to do, especially people who've been worried about it for years. But my best advice, the cheapest thing, the best thing you can do if you think you have bad breath, is first to ask somebody very close to you, somebody in your family. Um, we'll call this person your, your confidant, somebody that you can confide in, someone that you can ask, and could be your wife, your husband, elder children, not very young thoughts, uh, your mother or father, do I have, do I really have bad breath? This is really the simplest, best way, first of all, to find out if you do have a problem or not. But let's say the significant other isn't willing to level with you and, and tell you. Or let's say you're afraid to ask. Is there some way you can find out yourself? Is there a simple, practical thing you can try? Well, 
first of all, there's, a more ex there's several expensive ways that you can uh, go through, relatively expensive. You can go to one of the several thousands of breath clinics that have popped up all over the Western world. Um, here's a, uh, a brochure from one of these clinics. It's actually run by a past student of ours. Um, so certainly you can go to one of these dental clinics. Um, but again, before you do that, I would really try and get some objective feedback from your significant other. In most cases, they will level with you. Now, if you're afraid to do so, okay, there's a couple of ways that you can smell your own odor. And I'll be happy to demonstrate. I'd like to see that. Can I try it myself? Or? Yes, well, the, the most important test, and this is really the two cent spoon test, uh, we'll demonstrate now, and you'll just hold the spoon for a moment. I just like to give some background. It's been known for about 70 years that in people with healthy gums and healthy teeth, who are otherwise healthy, the main source of bad breath is the very far back part of your tongue, towards your throat. Way back, and we'll sample that in a second. Um, it hasn't been known why the back of the tongue is such an important place for bad breath. And our new theory is that the back of the tongue is the place that harbors post-nasal drip. Maybe I'll explain that a little bit better. Many of us suffer from post-nasal drip. This is a kind of a mucus that instead of falling this way out of the nose, falls backwards and it runs down the back of our throats. I suffer from it, many others. And uh, some of this mucus la ends up on the back part of the tongue. And it probably doesn't smell when it gets there, unless you have a nasal infection. But if it sits on the tongue, and it's very mucus, and it tends to st sit on the tongue for long periods of time, the tongue is the most bacteria-infested part of the body, perhaps. Is that why it has sometimes that funny color to it? Um, well, it's related to it, and it's related also to dead cells on your tongue. Um, but the far back of your tongue is really a very important uh, source of bad breath. But you mentioned the coating on the tongue. I can demonstrate a very simple test for just smelling your tongue, and that is to smell your wrist. Now stick out your tongue and lick your wrist. Wait a few seconds, and then we'll compare odor, the, the new odor with the previous one. And you can see the tongues do smell. And this is partly because of the bacteria and partly because of the coating of dead cells that exist on the tongue surface that are always being renewed and replenished. Okay? But the source of the real important source of, source of odor is coming from way back. So if you'll just... Uh, demonstrate together with me what you have to do is stick this spoon way back and sample from the very very far back part of your tongue this is not an easy thing to do and maybe you should ask someone to do it for you such as your dentist and we'll get to that in a minute but uh, I can demonstrate and you just go like this okay yeah. not an easy test to do but no. it, the most important this is the most important one and essentially what you do is you can smell it and in many cases, if there is an odor, it will very often be associated with some yellow coating that looks like mucus and comes off on the spoon. This is a real giveaway that the bad breath is coming from post-nasal drip at the back of the tongue. So I would say that this is a test that you can try at home. You may or may not be able to scoop it out. But in many people, this is the main cause of bad breath.